What up players, it's Wallboss Tay up in this mud. Today we finish our Chaos Space Marine from the Thousand Suns Legion. We do the highlights, uh, paint up this little eyeball in the shoulder pad there, creepy. And we do some tabard work with some detail. Also we paint the Argelin Earth. Oh my gosh, it's getting in his boot. I'm gonna have to clean this later, but for now, that's yeah, fine. Cracked Earth, awesome. So the colors you're gonna need are, in no particular order, Temple Guard Blue, Siltek Green, Warpstone Glow, Rackhearth Flesh, Gehenna's Gold, Mephiston Red, Art Coat, Art Coat, Arginlan Earth, Mood Green, Everland Sunset, Dryad Bark. And I think that's it. So thanks for watching, everybody. Oh, also, if you want to do the gems in purple, you're going to be using Sirius Purple and Warp Fiend Gray. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, and we'll see you in the next one. Later, please. Okay, hey, welcome back to uh, part two, how to paint a thousand suns chaos space marine. We're gonna get started by painting Siltek green. You might remember this as our base coat. And what we're doing now is uh, we, we highlighted Siltek green with temple guard blue in video one. And what we're doing now is we're kind of toning it back down with the base color. Uh, but the reason why I used Temple Guard Blue to highlight in step one was to give the shade... Uh, I, I found that the shade of Drakenhof Nightshade goes on really nicely and when you put the... when you apply it over Temple Guard Blue it creates a great canvas to do this second base coat. So um, you, you don't want to cover the whole area of what you just did, but you kind of want to paint uh, the center, leaving a little bit of a highlight near all the hard edges. So on this leg armor, I'm going to paint the center here, but I'm going to leave the top part here that connects to the um, center, the torso, and the bottom area. Same thing for this side. And if you want to thin this Siltek green down, it'll help you achieve an even greater effect, I think. The thing is, you don't want it to be put on too thick. It creates the turquoise look that I really, really like on these Thousand Suns a lot better if there's a little bit of water or paint thinner that cuts it down to almost like a glaze that goes over the color and makes a nice little uh, bit of depth. Okay, and let's see, oh we have to paint the, the center of our torso here. We'll do that in just a second. All right, I only did that for the main armor part. For the shoulder pad, the striped one, I'm not gonna do that. We're gonna do something a little bit different. So we're gonna start by taking our Temple Guard Blue. And we are going to paint alternating lines. these stripes in the shoulder pad. Now this is one of the fine cast ones that come in the Thousand Suns upgrade kit. So you won't have to worry about this if you're using a regular Chaos Space Marine shoulder pad. Okay, 
Okay, also, you're going to take your Temple Guard Blue and you're going to reinforce these Temple Guard Blue lines. We're going to be doing this... Oops. Uh, highlighting here. So you're trying to hit all the hard edges. And this creates your first highlight. Okay. So uh, this is up to you whether or not you want to do this, but now we're going into the leg armor. I wouldn't do this for all of my Space Marines or Chaos Space Marines. This is actually a new technique I haven't tried yet, but I saw it on a guy who puts up stuff on Cool Mini or not. And I really like the effect especially as it's a Thousand Suns model, so it's these guys are a little bit magical, so what I'm doing is I'm taking my Temple Guard Blue and I'm going to create these highlight lines inside the armor. On the inside of the trim. Lined up right just about against the trim. Okay, and see next with our Temple Guard Blue, we're going to highlight up the helmet just a little bit by the eyes, the focal point of any model, and on the highest parts of the armor. For the backpack, I like to do a line right on the inside where the gold rim reaches these little breathing balls here on the back and also I like to do a line that connects to the back of the gold by the exhaust ports okay next we're gonna take our temple guard blue and we're gonna fill in these stripes These things are iconic for Thousand Suns, Chaos Space Marines, so we want to make sure we do a very good job with it. Also, we line them up across from each other. Oops. As always, I'm bracing my wrists against each other. When you get to the back, it's kind of tricky if you've already glued the heads on. So I realized this halfway through that maybe it might have been easier to have the head or backpack glued on at the end, but that's all right. Not too many people are really going to see down here, down the back, so I don't really go all the way down. It isn't necessary to put a little bit of effort, though. Okay, now for the fun part. We're going to take Averland Sunset and we're going to paint up some yellow stripes. Yeah, so I just finished reading Thousand Suns. I've been reading it for a long time. Uh, I couldn't really get a momentum with the novel. Not to say it's a bad novel, um, I just wasn't really getting that much of a momentum into it, I guess. Some novels that I read for the Horace Heresy are such page turners that, you know, it's hard to, it's hard to put them down. And um, Thousand Suns for me just wasn't one of them, but that's not to say that it wouldn't be for you. I think uh, leaves some very interesting questions at the end of the book. 
I won't go into too many spoilers right now, but throughout the book there's a whole question of whether or not the Thousand Sons are good guys or bad guys. They say they're loyalists the whole time, and um, it's it's a little bit, it's not as mysterious as the Alpha Legion, but um, yeah, you kind of get a sense that these guys were, they feel like they were dealt a bad hand. Okay, I'm gonna take some Temple Guard Blue now and just kind of tidy up the sides. As the only Legion really fully afflicted by the Psyker gene, like just about everybody in the Legion had it, they kind of went about their training their Marines a little bit differently. Besides practicing the martial um, aspects of being a Legionnaire, they also got to really focus, thanks to Magnus, their Primarch, on, they got to focus on the more um, mystical sides, controlling their powers, being able to divide their, their psychic schools into, or psychic powers into different schools of learning. So that would have been so cool to see some kind of um, reflection in the rules rather than they just have magical bolter shots, but um, they have what they call different warrior cults, which is uh, almost like specializations, where the Space Marines have, uh, in the Thousand Suns Legion, they study different uh, disciplines. So you've got one cult of Legionnaires who their, their specialty, their focus, and what they train to do is tell the future. And Araman is one of these guys, and it's so cool to see how, how they work in tandem with the other Marines. Uh, you've got other guys whose specialty is telekinesis, so they make shields out of their telekinetic powers. There's a group that focuses on fire and using, uh, using fire, so they, they can either shoot fireballs or superheat up an area or they can create flame shields, or they can um, superheat the blood in an enemy's body so that they explode from the inside. Uh, really, really cool. Reminded me of a lot of the um, College of Fire in, in Warhammer Fantasy, Bright Wizards. Um, but yeah, it's, there's one scene in particular that I really enjoyed. And uh, it's not spoiling anything, there's, there's no real spoilers in it, but there's this one battle scene that takes place where all of the different warrior cults are involved in, in this one battle, and they're all working together, and they're all pushing towards this one objective, and you've got, you've got the guys holding up the shield so that the enemies can't penetrate it with their bullets, and then um, Araman's squad is kind of predicting where the enemies will kind of break cover and run, so they send it forward to the flame guys who shoot them with flames as they leave, and it's just so cool to um, to watch and to read about. Like, you, you picture it in your head, and you can kind of see the, the actions all playing out. It's, it's a lot... It was, it was one of the more visually awesome moments in the Horse Heresy series. So, uh, hats off to you. Graham McNeil, I think, was the author, I think, and uh, for creating this world that I, I totally fell in love with, these characters that I really got to like and feel bad for, and um, yeah, really good book. So I'll do a little bit of a Fluff Hunters uh, book review on it later. Uh, that's just a little, a little bit of what I thought. So we're going to take our Drakenhof Nightshade now and paint in between the lines of our shade. So between each of these little blue bars. I'm gonna try to pull the shade to the recesses and off to the side. Try not to get it into the middle of the blue bars as much as possible. Otherwise, you just have to go back. Okay. 
I had a great time reading it. Um, left some loose ends, Balthazar Gold, that I had a good time thinking about. Also, uh, the, the thing that they were starting to do in this novel, this was, I think, the 12th book, I believe, in the Horse Heresy series. The thing that they're starting to do, which I find really interesting, is that they're bringing in characters from other novels and having them play pretty nice sizable chunks in the storyline. So while they've done this in the past with other other novels, it kind of made sense to. Like for the Fulgrim novel, they brought in Saul Tarvitz and Lucius, who we kind of get to know in the early trilogy. But for this one, it was cool to see a Captain... Gosh, what, what was it? Demeter? Uh, the the captain in the Sons of Horus that was originally in the Mournival before Garviel Loken. It was pretty cool seeing him kind of interacting with the rest of them. So, yeah, hats off to the writer and to Black Library for creating such engaging work. I'm just taking some Rakarth flesh now, and we are going to highlight up the Tabard. I'm going to use light feather strokes, short feather strokes, because you want it to kind of maintain the appearance of parchment or cloth. Very, uh, very nice cloth. Okay, so, 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 I've got this other model here with an open chest plate that I'm painting up at the same time as the one for this tutorial. And I wanted to use this as an example for just a second because the guy that I'm painting has his bolter slung across his chest and some of you might be wondering how to paint the inside of the chest torso piece. So I use Balthazar Gold here on the insignia while keeping the turquoise belt buckle. I use Balthazar Gold on all the gold joints over here, silver for all of the wires and everything. And then I'm going to use Mephiston Red to paint the one wire that is leading from the center of the torso piece to uh, the side. So that's on this model as well. But uh, yeah, you wanna mostly use a lot of gold and silver in the center. For the tabard, there's a lot of different designs. You can use chains, so I use silver. I use gold for the little icon. And uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take some serious purple and I'm going to paint the gemstones. I think purple is a good off color that kind of creates a nice little pop of color to it. You can also use it here in the center piece right there. For my guy over here, you can't really see any, but uh, the Thousand Sun arms have gems inset on them, on the pieces. So I'm going to put the serious purple right there. All right, so back to our guy. <clears throat> Next thing, oh yeah, I'm going to use Drakenhof Nightshade also on the shoulder pad. I'm reading so many rumors of upcoming data slates and supplements. It's very exciting, very exciting. The one I personally hope for is something that confers uh, some special rules for different specific legions like Chapter Tactics did. For the founding uh, legions that turn traitor. Okay, I'm just going to take some Balthazar gold now and touch up the little point here. Boop. We are moving along. Okay, so the next step is that we are going to take some white scar and we are going to mix it into our temple guard blue. About a one-to-one -one ratio. This is going to leave us with a very, very light blue color. 
<clears throat> so we're going to take this light color and we are going to paint within our first Temple Guard blue highlight. Wherever you see that being the uh, most prominent highlight, you're going to just put a little line inside. Not too much, you don't want to go all the way down because what you're doing, especially remember to use the very tip of your brush and to um, use as fine tip as possible. What you're doing is you're creating a focal point for the eye to go on to show the illusion that light is reflecting off of these armor plates. And if you do it all by itself without the Temple Guard Blue part of the highlight, then it looks a little bit too stark. I'm going to keep this highlight within what was already highlighted. For these stripes on the armor, we're highlighting up against one corner, or one edge rather. So I'm going up against the edge that's closest to the back, and I'm cons being consistent with how I paint my uh, highlight on the back edge of the stripes. And do the same thing here for the little balls. <laughs> Igor, what's so funny? You said little balls, master. You see that? I didn't touch that. I am the perfect gentleman. So this goes to my my theory that the best highlights are those created over successive layers. By itself, one highlight looks okay, but when you have two, like if you look on this leg armor piece, You've got the Sotek Green, Temple Guard Blue, and then the mix of Temple Guard and the Highlight, then that is like the best way to go. For the head armor, we're going to paint the Highlight on the bottom side of all these blue stripes. Again, consistency. And if you make a mistake, you just go back a step with the last paint that you used and you can easily clear it up. Okay, where are we now? Where are we now? I think it's time to do some writing on the tabard. Before we do that, we're going to finish up the gems. So I'm going to use Warp Fiend Gray. I'm going to paint a tiny line, like a crescent. Almost like a fish hook. Then I'm going to take my Dawn Stone. I light up the black of the bolter, that is. I think I missed a little piece there on the bolter. Okay, and oh, also, yeah, gold in the center.
we're also going to paint gold onto his face grill. So I'm just outlining the grill. Okay, now we're getting into the fun part, the uh, freehand. So I'm going to take some dried bark and water it down with a lot of water. Thin it down so that it becomes very, very watery. And I'm going to think about my pattern on what I want to do for this this guy's tabard. So you've got kind of two styles of tabards here. You've got these longer ones, like the one on the right here, that go almost all the way down to the ground. And on the left here, you've got these shorter ones. So let's see what I did with another short one. Oh yeah, All right, this is one I painted just this morning. And uh, what I did was I tried to replicate uh, Arabic. I, I googled an Arabic translation of all is dust on the bottom and um, Magnus has a quote in the book that he's attributed with saying so I trans translated that and tried to copy it down as much as possible. And then at the top, um, there was one that said, All hail the 15th legion. So it's really up to you. Uh, you don't even have to do this. You could just leave it as, as cream. But I decided that I really like it. So uh, something that I'm trying to do with all of my Thousand Suns tabards, guys, is I'm creating... I want it to look like old pages from books that they've taken to wearing uh, the aspiring sorcerers making them wear these these book pages and they're all volumes of many a quaint and curious volume of forgotten lore so uh, lots of script and squiggly lines and set close together that's the trick with doing a script I think you want the lines to be really really close together if they're too far apart then uh, it'll look like you know you ever see a that old paper, college ruled versus high school ruled, open ruled paper. One just looks so much more professional, the college ruled, because the, the lines are so close together. So that's kind of what I'm trying to do there. And there I've got a whole bunch of script. And what I'm going to try to do is do a, um, a, little, a little, little picture of something. So I kind of like the hieroglyphics Egyptian theme. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sh I'm going to show a guy prostrating himself before a thousand suns marine. Now this is very I guess interpretive. Here he's holding a staff because you can't really see what it is but in my head I know that there's this guy that's bowing on the ground and this guy standing up is a thousand sun. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take some Mephiston red I'm going to add a little spark of color by putting a little square at the beginning of a couple of these lines kind of like paragraph breaks, you see? Alright, so there's that. For the eyes, we're going to use a simple 1-2 combination of Warp Stone Glow and Moot Green. And we're on to the I believe, yeah, we're on to the Argelin Earth after this, the base. So when doing eyes, oh, space marines, you want to stick to the center. And you see there my, my paint kind of spilled all over the place. So I'm going to dry my brush, see if I can clean up what I can clean up. I'm going to get the moot green in there. You want it just on the tip of your brush, and then you just want to boop. Just want to 
Boop, right in the center. Ah, it's not so bad. Okay, <clears throat> uh, last thing, last thing is we're gonna take some art coat and we are going to paint over these jewels. Now, something else that I've done, here you can see on this one, he's got two purple jewels on his belt, so we're gonna cover that as well. Something else that I've done that I wanted to show you is some of these backpacks and shoulder pads and torsos have these um, eyes carved onto them. So instead of painting them all in gold, I painted them to represent like real eyes. Like this eye was actually blinking and Sinch put eyeballs on these guys' armor. So I used white and then I put a black dot in the center. And then I put a green, warp stone green dot inside of that to create the pupil. And then the little center of the iris I painted with another tiny little black dot. So a couple of these guys have this uh, eyeball peeking out from, from the shoulder pads. And then I covered the whole thing with gloss varnish just like I covered the jewels. And it looks pretty cool. For doing the transfer, it's a simple matter of painting art coat over the open shoulder pad. Then using Microsol and Microset to place the transfer onto it and then lock it into place. Then when you're done, paint over it because you can kind of see right now, I just put gloss coat over this and the um, surface is super shiny. So it does that to lock in the color and it makes a nice smooth surface for your transfer to go on, but you do want to um, dull it down. Otherwise it's gonna just be too shiny. So I'm gonna apply this transfer. I'm gonna give this guy some script and then we're gonna wrap up with some Argel and Earth. To uh, start though, before we get there, what I did was I took some Dryad Bark and then I painted the base here. So I'm gonna take some Dryad Bark and this is good because it's gonna give it a chance to dry. You wanna make sure you cover the base with some color because when the Argel and Earth cracks, it's gonna show the base underneath and I made the mistake of not doing this with one model. And when the, the cracks showed up, you could see the, the Temple Guard blue underneath. So you definitely wanna make sure you do this. And they say go with the dark color. So we're using this dark Dryad Brown, or Dryad Bark, it's very dark color because when the cracks show up, it'll contrast nicely. If you, if you did like a light color, then uh, you might not be able to see it against the cracks and the top layer of the cracked Argelin Earth. So uh, this is the model that we're doing, but just to be consistent, I'm gonna paint up the tabard for this guy, give him a insignia from the Chaos Space Marines set, and he should end up looking like this fellow when he's done with his tabard. So stay tuned, and then we'll wrap it up with Argelin Earth. All right, next we're going to paint the highlight, we're gonna highlight up the armor with Gehenna's gold. I didn't even notice this when I was talking about the uh, eyeballs that this model's shoulder pad has the eyeballs so we can do the uh, the effect that I was talking about. Um, but we'll, we'll hold that off for now. We're highlighting up all of the gold pieces that are kind of, again, close to a light source. Also, if you got any Drakenhof Nightshade on the gold, it will have dulled it down considerably. So Gehenna's Gold is a nice, nice highlight for that. Okay, and I'm gonna go too much because it's nice to see some contrast, but you can kind of get the picture there. 
All right, we're gonna add our Argelin earth. Now to the base. And yeah, I really enjoy this paint. You have to, you're gonna need to put it on thick though. <clears throat> Because when it uh, dries, like I said this before, if you put too little, then it will not create the cracks that you want it to. It'll just kind of dry in a dusty, dry paint kind of finish. But if you make it nice and thick, then when it hardens, or when it dries, it's going to harden and the paint is going to pull in on itself and it's going to create that awesome cracked earth cracked earth effect which is what I was saying before I got cut off so I uh, finished painting around the front I wiped the edge of my brush on the rim so I left a pretty nice sized deposit of the earth paint there on the front and uh, once this dries I'm gonna paint the rim but I'm not gonna worry about it for now last thing we're gonna do is paint this eyeball so I'm going to start with a Abaddon Black. Hmm. And then we're going to go with White Scar. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go back to our Abaddon Black and we're going to paint a little circle right in the center. This is when you can decide if you want your eyeball to be looking forward or backwards. So I'm going to have it looking forwards. There now, you could leave it like this and go to the final stage, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a little bit of a color. I also just noticed this um, wire set into his arm armor, so I'm going to paint that up with some Mephiston Red. You could also do it in black and that'd be fine, but since I've already got a red wire hanging from his chest there, I think I'm going to match it. Is there one on this side? Yep. All right, so now I'm gonna take my warp stone glow and I'm gonna create a green circle or green dot within the black one. And the last thing I'm gonna do is take my Abaddon Black one more time and add a tiny little dot within the green. Okay, the last step is we're going to take our art coat and cover the whole eyeball. It's nice and shiny. 
right, and there you have it. Um, the model that I painted with the insignia there. Oops, sorry about that. The model I painted with the insignia is trying, and the argillan earth and the black on the base looks like that. So, so let's paint the base. We're gonna take a brush and just take some Abaddon black and paint the rim. And go all the way around. There you have it. When it gets done, you can add some, some dried grass or something to uh, improve upon the cracked on appearance, but I'm going to leave mine as it is because I've got a lot of guys already with the dried grass on their bases. I want to kind of give some differentiating look to all of them. So thanks for watching the How to Paint a Thousand Suns uh, Space Marine, Chaos Space Marine. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and we'll see you in the next one.